Welcome back to the channel. This is Trendy Storm, and you are watching fourth part of What If Kid Naruto was the first builder of Death Note. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Now, wasting no time, let's start the story. Naruto suddenly broke the ice, asking Tazuna, "San, can you describe the condition of the people in your town?" He was approaching the bridge builder in the prearranged formation that included Sakura, him, Sasuke, and Kakashi. With just the noise of their footsteps audible to them, Tazuna sighed and pulled down his hat. His voice seemed to break in between as they continued to walk, Sakura looking at the ground in sadness, her fists clenched in anger. Well, the people there are now very poor. Financially we're drought, and there's barely anything for us to eat. You'll find most of the people now living on the streets, having resorted to beggary to keep themselves alive. Gado forces heavy taxes on us for the smallest of things and their thugs leech out extra sum from us, calling it the labor charges. Moreover, women are often used as their personal playthings. They've just sucked us of our money and our pride, he said, his voice appearing to break in between. With a neutral expression on his face, Naruto studied her for a moment before focusing his attention forward. The blonde calmly asked, I see. And has anyone ever stood up against Gado? as they were in complete silence. After a few seconds, the bridge builder said, yeah. And he probably got killed right? Sasuke asked, cutting Sakura off with a startled glance before she turned to look at the elderly man, whose depressing expression corroborated the Uchiha's conjecture. Glancing at Tazuna, who simply nodded, the Jinchuriki confirmed, and after that, no one dared fight Gato again right? Huh. Normal. Kakashi, on the other hand, stayed silent throughout their discussion, appearing to read a book while he heard what they were saying. And now finally, your Brea. Z Wush. In an instant, Naruto produced a kanai from his holster and threw it to his left, landing it on a particular area of the bush. Nah. Naruto? Sakura exclaimed, startled. The group had halted their progress as the blonde started to meander toward the bush. Looking over the foliage, the blonde mumbled to himself, hum. Now isn't this interesting? What is it, Naruto? Kakashi inquired as the blonde woman killed a white rabbit, causing Sakura to scream in fear. Her irate cry, Naruto. How could you do this? Caused him to narrow his eyes. Shut up Sakura. It was not my intention. And I did sense someone here. This rabbit was raised indoors, it was used for substitution. Stay ale. Sasuke duck. Exclaimed Kakashi. Success. Cluck. He, Sasuke, and Tazuna all bowed down in time to see a massive revolving blade pass over their heads and become embedded in the bark of a tree. Sakura was frozen, and Naruto narrowed his eyes as he edged his thumbs under the backpack straps, a great deal of killing intent filling the space. Even I was blind to that Zanbadu's approach. A tall, menacing figure emerged from the blur, staring fearfully at Sakura and Tazuna as it descended upon the massive Zanbadu embedded in the tree's bark. His harsh voice belied the Hite. Eight for Kiri that was wrapped around his forehead. Well what do you know, I expected at least one head to be rolling on the ground by now, he said. Naruto spoke loudly, surprising Zabuza. Momochi Zabuza, one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist huh? So Gato hired you to kill Tazuna. San here? Naruto asked. He asked, still standing on the blade, aren't you fast for such a little squirt? What's your name kid? With curiosity. None of your business, he said, allowing his gaze to rest on the orange ninja for a little while longer before returning them to Kakashi, Sasuke, and Tazuna. Sakura laughed and shivered as she stood there, frozen in place. Kakashi of the Sharingan, the copy ninja, what a pleasant surprise, he said. Kakashi narrowed his eyes and said, Demon of the Mist, Master of Silent Assassination Techniques. Where is the source of all this mist? As Kakashi advanced, the Uchiha considered. With authority, he commanded, Naruto, Sakura. Stay with Sasuke and protect Tazuna. San. Konoha. Office of the Hokage. Make a knock, make a knock. Hiruzen called, sitting in his comfortable chair behind the glossy wooden desk, signing some documents. Come in. He raised his head and grinned at the guest. With a shy smile, the adolescent with blonde hair said, Ah Shiho. San. Take a seat, still sporting her white coat. Instead of her usual swirl. T. 
tinted glasses, she was wearing regular ones now. She began by settling into a chair in front of the Hokage. Her soft voice said, Hokage. Sama, Ibiki. San has told me the story up until now, and Kissi's suspicions regarding Naruto, and the Hiruzen smile instantly disappeared as he sighed with a barely perceptible sadness. The old professor closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Yes, for some reason, and due to the events always happening around Naruto. Kun, or somehow connecting to him in one form or another. He's our prime suspect, even though he has proved himself innocent time and again, he muttered. Her question caught the Hokage off guard as she asked, can you tell me more about Naruto? As she adjusted her specs, he asked, you want to know about Naruto? Is it genuine curiosity, or somehow related to the Kira case Shiho? San? Both of the reasons Hokage. Sama. I know the villagers hate Naruto because of the burden which was forced onto him 12 years ago. But I want to know as to how he handled all the loneliness. Pranking people can't be the only let out for his emotions. Ibiki. San knows as to how a human mind functions. He said that the way Naruto was treated, and the way he behaved in the past was completely not normal. According to him, Naruto should be um darker and emotionally unstable, she stumbled toward the end, fully aware that their leader favored the Jinchuriki. Sarutobi took a puff on his cigar, always maintaining a distant expression in his eyes. He turned his chair on its wheels and peered out his large window, taking in the village. He is Shiho. San. Naruto. Kun has darkness. I don't know the extent of it, but he's got plenty of it. However, he's emotionally stable, that I can tell you for sure. He's a very strong and stubborn character, he doesn't know when to give up. However, considering the things that took place this past month, I'm confused about him. After graduating, and being placed in Team 7 under Hitaki Kakashi, he has gotten cold. He doesn't grin all day like before, he's calm, matured and just by staring into his eyes, you can tell that he's a mystery. You just can't figure out the boy, his eyes. He turned around in his chair, a wounded smile on his face, and she asked, what will you do if he does turn out to be Kira? Her eyes widened in shock at the response, if that's the case, then I hope that before we are able to prove he's Kira, either I retire from this post or just die. B. But Hokage. Sama, you can't talk like that. Surely you have to be ready for that possibility too. I know he's precious to you, but you have to stay strong as the leader of our village, she said as he nodded. He laughed, I have to, yes. But an old man like me can dream now can't he? Shiho looked at him pityingly. He's like my grandson. The reason I want to avoid the situation is because the way the villagers have treated Naruto, beaten him and almost killed him several times. Wait, beaten him? What do you mean they almost killed him? Shiho exhaled deeply as the office was softly lit by the setting sun. Yes, that's true. And that's why I'm so conflicted. I can't expect Naruto to absorb it all and come out with a smile. As the leader of Konoha, I can try and point out the positive aspects of our village, I can try and encourage him, maybe just so that he can stay loyal to the village due to him being an invaluable asset to us. But as an old man, as his surrogate grandfather, I can't stop him from hating the villagers. I just can't. So if he is in fact Kira, as the Hokage of Konoha, I have to punish him. No, most probably kill him even if he's the Jinchuriki. But as his grandfather, I can secretly hope that he continues to evade us, he explained as Shiho stared at him in surprise. She whispered, Hokage. Sama. You're talking as if you're already sure that he's Kira, which caused him to chuckle. He said, getting her to nod, no no Shiho. San, right now, I don't think he's Kira. But I am ready for that dark scenario too. There was silence between them as they sat there and Hiruzen became lost in memories of the blonde Jinchuriki who, in his mind, had once been a bright child. She said, criminals and selected civilians are still being killed, Hokage. Sama, which caused him to nod. She then nervously laughed as he pointed to the documents for the criminals and villagers who had been killed that were strewn all over his table. She muttered in embarrassment, yes, I can see that. Hiruzen asked, his grim expression forcing Shiho. San to turn away. Do you have something on your mind Shiho? San? Nothing in particular Hokage. Sama. But I am curious to meet Naruto. 
I can generally tell the nature of a person just by talking to him or her. Call it a woman's intuition or my sixth sense. But I want to meet him, she said while he stared at her for a while. Are you sure? Keep in mind that you have to be cautious with him. I don't know the extent of his intelligence, but he's on Shikaku's level. Or even higher, so make sure that you don't get lost on your way, he said with a smirk. Her eyes were determined, and Hiruzen smiled at the determined expression on her face. You're underestimating me Hokage, Sama. You yourself know the reason as to why I was chosen as a candidate for decrypting Kira's message. I can take care of myself, she said. He asked her softly, getting a nod in response, is there any particular reason you came here? Her expression darkened. Yes. It's regarding Shikaku. San. Outside Konoha. Tazuna and Team 7. This water is dense wait a minute. While crouching on the water's surface, Kakashi was thinking when Zabuza suddenly materialized behind him, having already broken through a few hand seals. Too late. Suiru no Jutsu. Water Prison Technique. Blast. Sensei. Sakura cried out as Kakashi was now encircled by the water prison. God damn it. How could I have been so irresponsible? Holding the technique with his right arm encased in the spherical water prison, he mentally berated himself as a laugh escaped Zabuza's lips. Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto were still standing guardian. Like in front of Tazuna. As he performed some single. Handed seals and a clone emerged from the water, the demon of the mist chuckled, I'm disappointed Kakashi, that wasn't much of a fight. So much for being the copy ninja huh? Unsure of what to do, Sakura looked at her teammates and said, take Tazuna and run you three. His water clone won't be able to follow you much farther away from the original one. Don't worry about me, just remember your mission, you have to protect Tazuna. San. Kakashi shouted. They couldn't abandon their sensei in that manner because he would undoubtedly be killed. Narrowing his eyes, Sasuke stepped forward and said, no. But Sasuke. Kun. The silver. Haired Junin yelled, listen to me Sasuke. Don't be foolish. This is not the time for blind heroics. Get away. As Naruto sighed in agreement. Sasuke nodded to his partner, think sensei. Zabuza is not doing anything to prevent us from running, he's standing there, meaning he obviously has planned something for us even if we try to run. So running away is out of the question, our best bet is to release you, Zabuza grinned at Naruto. Yes, the child is undoubtedly quick. Most likely this group's intellectuals. Look at you, you call yourself Shinobi? The clone of Zabuza asked as it moved forward to approach them. With a blast of killer intent, he caused Sakura's knees to tremble and Naruto's eyes to narrow. The killing intent did not seem to phase him in the slightest. But Sasuke also appeared to be under pressure. Even Sakura's hands were shaking now. I can still see the innocence in your eyes. The fear in them. Your knees are shaking. The clone said, closing his eyes and letting out a laugh. Has the standard of Konoha stooped so low to let you little runs graduate? What was your graduation exam anyway? A transformation technique? A clone technique? You think executing those useless little techniques makes you a qualified shinobi? Zabaza's voice referred to himself as the demon the fog. Sakura was still standing defensively in front of Sasuke, the water clone, with the kanai in a reverse grip. Shut up, we have not asked for your opinion, Sasuke said calmly, glaring at Sakura. But Naruto stood calmly, staring at Zabuza with a critical expression in his eyes. With a crazy gleam in his eyes, he questioned, oh. But have you ever killed someone? Have you ever seen the light leave their eyes as they die slowly, painfully? But Naruto lowered his head and curled his lips upward, laughing to himself at the foolish question at least, foolish in his opinion. But Sasuke clenched his jaw and took out a kanai. He realized, he's just playing around with us, trying to get us upset. He whispered, Sakura. Naruto, stay here and make sure nothing happens to Dazuna. San, which startled the pink. Paired Jenin and caused her to turn her head to look at him. Sasuke. Kun? She called, but Naruto just gave his Uchiha teammate a cool look and remained silent. Sasuke dashed forward, drawing multiple shuriken and hurling them towards Zabuza. Whoosh. The shuriken rotated from the momentum before coming to rest as the mist shinobi grasped them in his fingers. 
When Uchiha approached and removed a few smoke bombs before hurling them around him, he scoffed and said, is that it? Oof. Zabuza just stood there, waiting for Sasuke to attack, while Naruto arched an eyebrow at that. P. Fush. The smoke erupted into a blazing ball of fire that surprised the water clone with its sudden intensity. He's adopting my style, huh? As the fireball engulfed the clone and swiftly destroyed it as it approached the real Zabuza, Naruto grinned. Another clone emerged from the water mid. Way through a set of hand seals, and he thought, hey. The brat used the smokescreen to perform the hand seals, impressive that he can use his head still under so much pressure. Sweden. Suijin Heki. Water release. Water encampment wall. A massive wall of water appeared out of nowhere, easily towering the fireball as it swished into the wall and causing water vapor to rise and increase the mist. He's just too strong to be overcome, no matter how cunning one gets. Sasuke clenched his teeth and held his ground while he awaited the vapors to dissipate. Too slow. When Zabaza's water clone materialized in front of him, his eyes grew wide. Wham! Ah! Uh. Sasuke! Kun! Sakura exclaimed, sending the Uchiha flying back in their direction after being kicked in the stomach. Sasuke skidded across the ground and stopped clenching his eyes shut in agony and spitting out some blood. His stomach ached so badly that he realized, W. What power? We are no match for him. Sasu. She snapped her head at the harsh voice of her blonde teammate, Sakura, stay where you are. With his backpack on the ground, he remained facing Zabaza's water clone while the blonde started to approach the mist demon. S. Stop. Sasuke's hoarse voice caused Naruto to stop dead in his tracks. Panting, Sasuke slowly stood up and said, don't. He's T. Too strong. E. Even your fighting S. Style can't defeat him. He'll kill you. The blonde turned his head back and a smirk crept onto his lips. He mumbled the final line as Sasuke gritted his teeth, you underestimating me again, Sasuke. Either way, I'm not the type to give up without trying. He yelled angrily, I'm telling you to stop it. Our mission is to protect Tazuna. San. N. Not try to be a hero. Sakura remained silent, trying not to lose her cool. Tazuna appeared shaken as well, his hands shaking as he remained motionless, terrified for his life. With narrowed eyes, Kakashi commanded, Naruto. This is an order. If you don't run away with Tazuna and your teammates right now, I'm going to charge you for insubordination. As the blonde proceeded to approach Zabuza, the blonde with whiskers muttered to himself, do whatever you want. The hell I care, as he moved to stand a few meters in front of Zabaza's water clone. With narrowed eyes, he said, I congratulate you for having the courage to walk towards your own death so confidently brat. The Jinchuriki pulled out Kanai and whirled it around his index finger in a blurry motion before sprinting in the direction of the water clone and shocking Tazuna and his team with his blunt and self. Destructive move. Kakashi clenched his fist as the real Zabuza muttered, I thought you were smart kid. B-H-O-M. Naruto flew backward, scuffing up the earth in the process as his body skidded to a stop. The blonde Jinchuriki stumbled to his feet, and Sakura's worried voice cried out, Naruto stop it. What's gotten into you? Damn it you're just acting like an idiot. I told you. Naruto shot back, turning to glare at his teammate, shut up Teme. Sakura stared at him, her eyes widening with surprise. He only referred to Sasuke as, Teme, when he thought the guy had done something dumb, was acting emo, or irritated him by demanding a rematch. The genuine Zabuza laughed and said, well, they are already fighting among themselves, some team you have Hitaki Kakashi, which caused the copy ninja to sigh and ball his fists. Naruto, what exactly are you up to? He thought, everything you do has a purpose, but this time, I don't see any logic in this, while Sasuke stayed silent and cursed his blonde teammate behind his back. With his feet resting on Naruto's hite, ape that had fallen off when he was hit, Zabaza's clone said, hey, pathetic little brats. You think ninja life is a game huh? Stop talking, I'm fed up with your ninja moaning. I don't need advice from a weirdo with no eyebrows, Naruto said, using his elbow to mop up the blood from his lips and chin. And here we are again. He leapt forward once more while the water clone remained motionless, amusement flickering in his eyes as he saw Naruto scurrying in the direction of the real Zabuza. The water clone stood motionless and his eyes widened as he exclaimed, 
You think I created the water clone to just stand there and cheer for you? W. Why can't I move? It cried, causing the genuine one to stare at him bewildered. Is it the method of paralysis? When Naruto approached and pulled several shuriken out of his pouch to throw them at him while also making several hand gestures, Kakashi and Zabuza thought at the same time. He muttered, Cage shuriken no jutsu, shadow shuriken technique, as the blonde swiftly pulled out a fuma shuriken, wind demon shuriken, the few shuriken rapidly multiplying into dozens as they whizzed forward. Without the time to perform hand seals, Zabuza pulled out his zanbadu, the kabikari bacha, decapitating carving knife, and easily deflected every projectile that came at him. But as a fuma shuriken quickly followed the shuriken, hurtling toward him at a reckless pace, his eyes grew wide. The prick. Not enough. He cried out before leaping to a sufficient height and folding his legs. Cleansing. His shinobi pants were just slightly cut as the massive four. Bladed shuriken sliced through the water's surface, traveling through thin air. Oof. Heads up, fool was the first thing Zabuza said as he heard Naruto's voice from behind him, followed by a puff of smoke. Naruto pulled a kanai from his holster and hurled it in Zabuza's direction while still in the air. The mist shinobi thought to himself, hey. What an idiot, as he made to move the kabikari bacha to deflect the approaching kanai. But when he realized he couldn't move, panic shot through him, even stopping his eyes from going wide with shock. W. What on earth is this? Why am I unable to move? As the kanai approached him and Kakashi was looking forward with wide eyes, he started to struggle and try anything. A shadow that extended from the real Naruto's feet was linked to Zabuza's. No why this isn't feasible. The silver. Haired man was taken aback as the kanai closed in, slicing through the air. How could he have? He exclaimed. Cage main no jutsu, shadow imitation technique. Blast. In his panic, Zabuza lost focus, causing the water prison to break apart, and Kakashi swiftly turned back to his group. Shit. Kirshk. Cluck. Sasuke, Sakura, and Tazuna stared in shock at an ice wall that had grown protectively behind Zabuza, blocking the kunai's path as it pierced a section of the thick wall and became stuck in it. Sakura muttered, W. What the? As she stared at the ice wall as it gradually collapsed to the ground. Suddenly, a figure in a mask blurred into view in front of Zabuza. Haku. The mist demon let out a sigh of relief, the shadow remaining attached to his feet as Naruto, a hand seal in his mouth, narrowed his eyes at the newcomer. The masked figure, now standing next to Zabuza, said, I'm sorry, but I had to intervene. Had I not, you would have been dead. That kanai was aimed at your heart. Haku was speaking. But Kakashi was still staring dumbfounded at a standing Naruto, the blonde still making the rat hand gesture. How is he going to use the clan's secret method? The Junin, who was slightly behind Naruto, pondered. The reason Sakura had thrown a kanai at Sasuke during the bell test, when Team 7 was formed, suddenly dawned on him. Since Sakura's memories from that time were clear and unclouded, the blonde must have tricked Sakura into throwing the kanai at Sasuke by employing the shadow imitation technique. However, when did he find out? This was not a technique found in the trash or library. It was a secret method used by the Nara clan. Now that I think about it, he must have taken it from the Forbidden Scroll. He must have discovered it right beneath the section on Shadow Clone. The Junin with silver hair realized. But Zabuza, still immobile, narrowed his eyes and stared at Naruto. He looked at his water clone, who was still frozen in place and asking, how did you do it? On the other hand, the clone gradually changed into water and collapsed. But when Naruto shifted his right hand quickly to his right, his hands continued to form the rat hand seal, and he grinned. Zabuza's eyes grew wide when, against his will, the kabikari bacha in his right hand moved to his right, causing the zanbadu to sever Haku's waist. When the sliced form of Haku turned into ice and broke into tiny shards as it fell to the surface, he cried out, Haku. When another wall of ice rose between him and Zabuza, Naruto realized that it was an ice clone and sighed in frustration. The shadow that was attached to Zabuza's feet abruptly disappeared due to the disruption of its path, and Naruto's shadow only reached the newly formed ice wall. The blonde let go of the technique, bringing his hands to his sides as the shadow withdrew to its initial form. When Haku emerged from the ice wall as it gradually collapsed to the ground, Naruto gasped, I knew it. 
You were using the shadow imitation technique, instead of what I initially thought it to be the shadow paralysis technique. There were a lot of questions Kakashi wanted to ask his student right now, but he held himself back because of the circumstances, and Zabuza was secretly furious that he was outdone by this. Mir Genin. Upon hearing Sasuke's voice, the blonde sighed, Naruto, when did you learn that jutsu? Kakashi said sternly, not now Sasuke, we can ask him that later, as Haku was secretly wondering about something. However, why was Zabuza? Sama's water clone immobile at that time? I swear I didn't see any shadow interacting with him. As the blonde created the ram seal and murmured, Kai, Kakashi cast a quick glance at Naruto. Oof. The blonde was doused in smoke, and the junin watched in disbelief as the smoke cleared in preparation for. To see Naruto once more, after nothing had happened? His eyes, like Haku's and Zabaza's, widened in shock as he saw the hide. Eight on Naruto's forehead. Naruto, what they are? He stopped abruptly. The copy ninja turned to face Zabaza's water clone standing next to the leaf hide. Eight that was lying on the damp ground, thinking, wait a minute, but his hide. Eight was, oof. As the hide. Eight puffed into smoke, revealing another Naruto who was drenched in water and quickly dissipating himself to reveal that he was a shadow clone, Sakura thought in shock, what the? Now that I see it, this boy is definitely not your typical genin, Haku thought to himself as he turned away and stood next to Zabuza, who was genuinely baffled by what had happened. He snarled angrily, wah. What the hell happened? How did you do all that? Sakura and Sasuke were once again astounded by Naruto's abilities. But the Jinchuriki, scoffing at the question, crossed his arms over his chest. What a stupid thing to ask. You think I'm some cliche copyright hero who'll just spill out his secrets to his enemies when they ask so nicely? If you have a brain you eyebrow. Less free try to use it sometimes a. Uh. Especially when your life is in danger, he said with a smirk. When Haku stopped him, he stepped forward menacingly, saying, why you? Slowly, the mist shinobi exhaled, trying to calm himself down. Calm down Zabuza. Sama, that boy is just taunting you. But Kakashi was still occupied with reviewing Naruto's strategy in his mind, unwilling to accept his student's spontaneous thought process. It was one thing to be with his team in the village when they weren't in danger, but the blonde was nothing short of a prodigy of Itachi's and his father's caliber to genuinely think so deeply and maintain composure in such situations. He disproves me once more. I had assumed that he was simply losing his temper, but in actuality, he had everything planned out. He purposefully attacked Zabuza head. On with his kanai at the time, giving the impression that he was merely attempting to play the part of a hero. When Zabuza kicked him back, he managed to secretly make a shadow clone, turn it into his own hide. 8, and change back into Naruto the version of him without a hide. Ateya thus deceiving everyone. He led us all to believe that his hide. 8 had dropped to the ground close to Zabuza's feet after Zabuza had kicked him. The shadow clone, which had changed into his hide. Aiden was lying close to the clone's feet, then used the shadow paralysis technique covertly to limit the water clone's movements as he ran for the real Zabuza, which is why he was immobile. Zabuza was taken aback for a moment and had little time to avoid the numerous shuriken that Naruto had produced with the shadow shuriken technique. When Naruto threw the Fuma shuriken, Zabuza used his Zanbadu to deflect all of them. The copy ninja looked at his sensei's legacy and paused in thought, but... I don't understand something here. Why did Naruto fire those kanai when his plan was to use his shadow clone transformed into Fuma Shuriken all along? Why didn't he use the Fuma Shuriken right away while Zabuza was preoccupied? While Zabuza and Haku remained silent, seemingly reflecting on the events that had transpired, Kakashi wondered, there has to be a reason for this. He never does anything without any reason. A tense silence had descended between the two groups, which was strange. But hold on. It struck the Junin with silver hair like a ton of bricks. Naturally. In order to force Zabuza to draw his Zanbadu, he threw those shuriken and multiplied them using the shadow shuriken technique. Like he did with Sasuke, Zabuza would have simply stopped those first few shuriken with one hand if he hadn't employed the shadow shuriken technique. He also used a Fuma shuriken as a follow. Up to his attack after forcing him to draw his Zanbadu. Zabuza had to jump to avoid it because he didn't have time to sheath his Zanbadu back and catch it with his hand. Nobody realized, though, that it was actually a changed shadow clone that hurled the kanai at his heart. 
Meanwhile, the true Naruto had taken advantage of Zabuza's distraction by trapping him with the shadow imitation technique. Being immobile at this point, Zabuza attempted to move in a panic but failed to focus, breaking the water prison as I managed to escape. This boy I can't believe I'd had devised a foolproof plan to kill a Junin under extreme duress in just one minute by employing the simplest of methods. Just tell me, Naruto, how are you? Kakashi never imagined that he would come across a special shinobi like Naruto, much less his pupil. Zabuza growled at Naruto as he mockingly said, at least now you know the importance of those useless little techniques, while Sasuke and Kakashi couldn't help but snicker at the remark. With a serious expression on his face, Sasuke walked to stand with Naruto and Kakashi as Zabuza exclaimed, you're going to regret this you little whelp. This guy's mask is on his face. As a matter of fact, Kakashi asked, you're not a hunter nin are you? Haku remained silent. With a low voice, Kakashi lifted his hide. Eight to reveal the Sharingan, and Sasuke nodded in agreement. Listen, I'm going to take on Zabuza. You too will have to handle that masked boy. But be careful, he has a bloodline limit which allows him to use the ice element. So stay on your toes, Kakashi said. Without trying to soften his tone, Haku questioned, What are your orders, Zabuza? Sama? causing the junin next to her to sigh. When the tall junin made a run for the trio with the zanbatu in his hands dangling loosely behind him, Zabuza spoke and his apprentice nodded. You take on those two brats and make sure that Blondie dies very painfully. I'll take on Kakashi, he said. But before slamming them to the ground, Haku began to break through a few hand seals. CRRK An ice wall rose up from where Naruto was standing, dividing him and Sasuke from Kakashi, and he jumped sideways. Click. The voice of metal hitting metal behind the wall was heard by the blonde. Naruto. Sasuke admonished him as he assumed his position and Haku was out of sight. The two heard, you're slow, as an unexpected water figure appeared behind Sasuke and assumed Haku's form, reaching for Sasuke's neck with a senbon between his fingers. Blast. Naruto, who had just thrown a kanai at the water clone, said, Sasuke, stay on your guard, as he moved to stand behind the Uchiha. As the blonde accessed the situation, his mind was racing a million miles per hour, with Kakashi and Zabuza already engaged in combat by the river. He muttered, stay away from water Sasuke. Roll back, and then abruptly jumped back, using the chakra beneath his feet. The Uchiha followed suit, landing close to Sakura and Tazuna. Sakura, stay behind Tazuna. San. Make sure no one attacks from behind, we'll take care of the front, Naruto, who was crouching and clutching a kanai at the moment, commanded with narrowed eyes. Naruto, can't you Sen? As Sasuke closed his eyes and said, I already know where he is. Calm down. The blonde reappeared a few meters ahead of them, forming out of water. In a cool voice, he said, I don't want to hurt you. Our only target is Tazuna. If you let us do our work, we'll leave you alone, causing the Jinchuriki's eyes to narrow. Is this man for real? When Naruto shook his head, Sasuke thought incredulous thoughts. His straightforward response, sorry, but we can't, caused Haku's shoulders to droop a little. With a, very well. He shot over to them. While still crouching, Naruto cried out, Sasuke. I'll back you up. As the Uchiha darted forward, breaking through several hand seals already. Kaden. Gukaku no Jutsu. Fire release. Great fireball technique, as he exhaled deeply, a powerful stream of fire emerged between his thumb and index finger. Haku used his chakra to jump and avoid the fireball that was blazing towards him. He then threw several senbon in Sasuke's direction. The Uchiha leapt to his left, just barely managing to avoid them. Haku landed on the wet ground and ran toward the genin with the raven hair, who took his kanai out of his holster. He reached out to punch Sasuke in the face, but instead he caught the Uchiha's wrist as the kanai came flying in. Sasuke leaned back, the punch grazing his chin as he used his momentum to flip backwards and kick Haku in the gut. With a, uh, sound. The ice user leapt sideways and avoided a shadow tendril that was about to make contact with his shadow, skidding back a little. He looked at Naruto with the jutsu as the shadow followed him, and Haku rolled a little on the ground before leaping back, keeping a safe distance from Naruto. Excellent idea, the blonde realized as Sasuke stood a few meters away from Haku. The ice user said, that shadow imitation technique of yours is very bothersome I see, when. Oof. Surprise. 
Haku gasped in response to Naruto's voice from behind him and swiftly turned around before realizing he was immobile. The ice user asked in an oddly calm voice, where were you hiding? While Naruto, who had just materialized behind him in a cloud of smoke, caught Haku with his shadow stuck to the ice user's feet. So that backpack he had dropped earlier was his shadow clone that had changed? A shadow clone that had changed into a backpack while still sporting his actual bag? As Sasuke looked at the Naruto, who had suddenly materialized behind Haku with the backpack slung over his shoulders, he was filled with frustration. The shadow clone of Naruto said icily, none of your business. I see. Then whoa. Took. Sasuke's chop to Haku's neck caused him to stop suddenly, falling to the ground unconscious as the shadow clone vanished and the real backpack dropped to the floor. A. N. Apologies for the interruption, but just to be clear, the backpack Naruto was wearing the entire time was actually a shadow clone a, a shadow clone that had taken on the appearance of Naruto's real backpack and changed into Oniya which is why he removed it before each battle to avoid displacing the shadow clone. What the heck? Sasuke thought in disbelief as unconscious Haku started to solidify into ice. Another ice clone, damn it. While Sakura and Tazuna were still crouching in front of Naruto, the real Naruto also had an expression of surprise on his face, he realized. The blonde was thinking something else when he heard a rustle behind Sakura and Tazuna. Come on come on, what are you waiting for now? Hurry up, he exclaimed. Sakura's eyes widened as she sensed Haku's voice becoming louder as the ice user approached them from behind, several senbon in his hands. I'm sorry for this. But you must die, Haku said. So all along, the real one was hiding there? Sakura knew she wouldn't even have time to blink when she closed her eyes in terror, her body paralyzed as she awaited the impending pain. Oof. Cage Shibari no Jutsu, Shadow Paralysis Technique. What the hell? Sasuke was shocked to see Naruto materialize behind Sakura in a tiny puff of smoke. Meanwhile, Haku, who had been running toward Sakura at a blurry speed, had frozen in place a few feet away from Sakura. Naruto smiled slightly, the shadow from his feet touching Haku's and the blonde's back touching Sakura's. You can't deceive me kid. I'm your papa when it comes to these things, I said. Sakura asked, taking a few steps forward before turning around, and... Naruto. How? Tazuna turned around as well, almost peeing himself. Hey. And where's my... Sakura trailed in realization, her pupils slowly enlarging as she turned to look in shock at Naruto's back. Haku marveled aloud, so you substituted with her bag? As he looked at Sakura's backpack, which was now resting on the spot where Naruto had been crouching. Sasuke shook his head and looked back at the small ice shards by his feet as Naruto said, you think by dodging my shadow imitation technique earlier you'd made us believe that your ice clone was the real deal huh? I always knew where you were hiding, the real you. I just had to wait for the right instant to catch you. Why do you think I ordered my teammate here to stand behind Tazuna? You can't escape my senses, smirking. So he was aware that this one was a copy of ice all along? The fool could have informed me about this, the Uchiha sighed, bawling his fists. No matter how strong he became, he could never seem to catch up to Naruto. The blonde would always outwit him with her cunning tactics. Sasuke was certain that Naruto was the best strategist on the spot. Naruto withdrew a kanai from his holster and said, I don't want to kill you, but sorry. The mission demands that you die. For Tazuna. Sans safety, with regret in his eyes. As he brought his right arm back across his chest to launch the kanai, he saw a familiar figure suddenly emerge beside Haku and teleport the ice user away with him in a cloud of smoke. This caused his pupils to widen in shock. What the heck? When Naruto turned to look behind him, he saw the same figure with Haku appear next to a tired. Looking Zabuza on the river, startling him. The figure said, Zabuza. Sama, sorry it took us some time, as a second, well. Known figure materialized next to them in a cloud of smoke. You too. Zabuza appeared stunned, and Kakashi trailed behind in shock. Guzu. Maizu? Where were you all this time? Zabuza asked, his eyes narrowed, his body lightly panting and covered in bruises. Beside him stood the recently arrived demon brothers, and Haku, too was taken aback to discover they were still alive. Maizu sneered, Zabuza, this world is. Cursed, as he tore off his upper body clothes. Guzu followed suit, 
exposing their torsos entirely covered in paper bombs, making Zabuza and Haku's blood run cold as they stood mere inches from their painless deaths. What the heck? Whack, Guzu, Maizu, where were you all this time? Zabuza asked, his eyes narrowed, his body lightly panting and covered in bruises. Beside him stood the recently arrived Demon Brothers, and Haku, too, was taken aback to discover they were still alive. Maizu sneered, Zabuza, this world is cursed, as he tore off his upper body clothes. Guzu followed suit, exposing their torsos entirely covered in paper bombs, making Zabuza and Haku's blood run cold as they stood mere inches from their painless deaths. What the heck? Whack! A massive explosion occurred, sending shockwaves through the region. Tazuna and the other members of Team 7 had to cover Kakashi's eye with their elbows. A great deal of water splattered as they fell upon them like raindrops. But as Naruto searched his mind for an explanation, his eyes narrowed. Why would the Demon Brothers do that? Why would they? Could it be? However, this was not our original plan. The explosion gradually subsided as he thought about it, the trees rustling in the wind, until Kakashi materialized in front of them using Shunshin. He exclaimed, is everyone safe? Over his shoulder. Hi Sensei. Sakura yelled back, moving to stand behind Tazuna and Naruto, while Sasuke confronted the bridge constructor. This must be Kira's work, Kakashi thought to himself as he looked at Naruto, who appeared astonished by the whole thing. When they noticed a silhouette of a structure that resembled a dome, the thick clouds of smoke started to part. So, they're still alive? As he peered at the building through his Sharingan, the copy ninja realized. Naruto and Sasuke squinted as they fixed their gaze on an ice dome that was gradually fracturing before their very eyes. Sakura's eyes widened as she saw Zabuza on his knees, with blood streaming down his left shoulder and ribcage. Haku appeared to be panting as well, standing next to him on the water, his mask slowly starting to break. As the mask came off to reveal the ice user's face, the Jinchuriki kept staring at him. As Haku wiped a thin stream of blood off his chin, both he and the Uchiha blushed slightly at seeing his face, thinking him to be a girl. The ice user knelt down to support Zabuza by slinging his injured arm over his shoulder. Zabuza. Sama. Are you alright? The mist demon appeared even more disheveled as he persisted in panting and breathing raspily. The ice user nodded as he created a one-handed seal and mumbled, R. Retreat Haku. Team 7 watched as the two were covered in gusts of wind that eventually made them disappear through wind shunshin. Tazuna breathed a sigh of relief as Kakashi let down his guard. The silver. Haired Junin turned to face them, and Sasuke asked with narrowed eyes, shouldn't we have finished them off? The bridge builder nodded, too shaken to speak, and Kakashi said, no, they still would have escaped. Are you okay Tazuna? San? Naruto got up and walked forward taking his backpack and putting it over his shoulders. The blonde said, we should move on, sensei, as he came back to grab another backpack in front of Tazuna. When Naruto handed Sakura her backpack, she blushed embarrassingly and said, here. Sakura glanced at the bearded blonde with curiosity, but Sasuke raised an eyebrow and asked, you really planned all of it from the beginning? The backpack stuff? Having your shadow clones transform into your backpack as well as those shuriken? The blonde shrugged casually. Yeah, it's just my way of fighting. I've got chakra and spades, why not use it properly then? This was a C. Rank mission. It's true that we weren't expecting any sort of major combat situations like this, still it never hurts to be cautious, on which you can probably agree with me now, Sasuke sighed, and Sakura turned to face him in shock. Her teammate was undoubtedly exceptional. He started out graduating dead last but was quickly making a name for himself as a prodigy a kind of shinobi genius that was probably unheard of in the shinobi community. Kakashi started to advance, lowering his hite. Eight to conceal his sharingan. The junin said, let's just go, we have wasted enough time as it is, and Tazuna started to follow, eager to get home more than before. After a few hours, the land of waves. They had just arrived in the town, and Tazuna and Team 7 were now strolling through the streets. Sakura had clearly noticed the awful living conditions of the residents, as evidenced by the sorrowful expression in her eyes. Together with Kakashi, Naruto and Sasuke were acting normally as they strode silently in the direction of the Dazuna residents. Make a knock, make a knock. Sakura sighed in relief as Tazuna knocked on the wooden door of his home after they had arrived. With her hands clenched in a prayer, she thought, finally. 
I'm never going to whine about a mission being boring Kami. Sama, as Naruto and Sasuke stood next to her, amused by her antics. The door opened to reveal a woman with dark blue hair, framed by two bangs, and bright eyes that beamed at the sight of her father. With a smile on her face, Tazuna said, too. San. Tsunami, have a look at who I brought, he said as he moved aside and gestured to the quartet in back. Hitaki Kakashi said, Kanichiwa Tsunami. San. I'm Hitaki Kakashi, and these are my students, with a small bow in return. She said, it's nice to meet you, Hitaki. San, instantly sensing that her father's efforts were finally bearing fruit. When Sakura introduced herself, Tazuna said, these are the brave Konoha Shinobi I was able to hire, with a slight smile. She said, my name is Haruna Sakura, and I'm happy to meet you, which caused Tsunade to smile and nod. His greeting was brief and direct, Uchiha Sasuke, and Tsunami's eyes widened slightly. She exhaled, and Uchiha? You must be quite strong, realizing that this child had to be the last Uchiha still alive in Konoha. As he entered the house, Tazuna spoke softly over his shoulder, yeah, you can't underestimate these kids. They are hardcore shinobi, especially that blonde-haired kid in the back. He's the strongest of the three. Sasuke sneered lightly at Tazuna as Tsunami turned her startled gaze to the quiet blonde standing behind his teammates. Naruto gave a slight wave, a tiny smile curling around his lips. It's good to meet you, Tsunami. San, said Uzumaki Naruto with a smile on his face. Tsunami noticed something unusual in his deep blue eyes, which had nothing to do with his outward look. She could tell, having been through so much in her life, that those eyes weren't those of a twelve. Year old. But Sakura, like Kakashi and Sasuke, had a look of surprise on their faces. Naruto did not smile much. He had not smiled like that since the team had been formed, especially not in front of strangers. He would usually be cold to the villagers in Konoha. And now that he was in Nami no Kuni, his entire attitude had transformed. As she stepped aside to let them in, Tsunami exclaimed, embarrassed to see that they were still outside. Oh. Please enter, make yourselves comfortable. Tsunami shook her head at Tazuna as he gulped down the remainder of his sake, and Team 7 took a quick look around the house before heading to the living room. The woman with dark blue hair turned to face Kakashi and bowed respectfully. I'm sorry our living conditions may not be up to your standards, but I hope you enjoy your stay here, the woman said. No problem Tsunami. San, it has a warm home. Like atmosphere, Sasuke, Sakura, and Kakashi said, their expressions strange. Tsunami gave Naruto a warm smile as he placed his backpack on a shabby couch. Naruto was grinning. She nodded at them and started to head upstairs with Team 7 in tow. I'm glad. Please follow me, I'll show you your respective rooms. Lunch should be ready in a while, she said. Sakura, Sasuke, and Kakashi couldn't believe that Naruto had a permanent smile on his face as they kept glancing at his face. Moreover, it appeared sincere. Why would he be content in such a place? What has become of him? A few minutes later. With some enthusiasm, Naruto patted his belly and leaned back in his chair, saying, Ah, that was great Debeo. Really, I'm so glad. Tsunami, sporting an apron, exclaimed with joy as she gave the blonde a small smile in return. When Sasuke pushed back his chair to pick up his chopsticks, they fell to the ground, and they both turned. Raising an eyebrow, Naruto saw that Sakura, Tazuna, and Kakashi were staring at him as if he had just asked Sakura out on a date of something that hadn't happened since the creation of Team 7. What? He inquired, causing them to shake their heads as they carried on eating, and Tsunami, too, was staring at them bewildered. What is going on with the blondie? For what reason is he grinning? Why does he look so content? Is it possible that he's making out with Tsunami? With his face pressed into his bowl, Tazuna ate the rice ferociously while scowling behind his back at Naruto, who had now stood up and picked up his utensils. He entered the kitchen and placed the utensils on the slab while the blonde got to work on the dishes. As she hurried to his side, Tsunami gasped to see him. She said, you don't need to do that Naruto. San. Please don't worry about anything, as he grinned and shook his head. She was now reaching for the plate in his hands. It's not a formality, Tsunami. San. It's just habit, the woman with dark blue hair blinked at him while he turned on the tap. She looked to Tazuna for assistance, thinking it strange that one of their recent arrivals was indulging in a menial household task. 
When Naruto finished his rice, the bridge builder was still giving him a glare. This demonstrates it. He was so quiet and icy the entire way, and now that he's seen my daughter, the brat is attempting to win her over. When he was done, Kakashi said, Okay, I need to tell you guys about something, briefly getting over his shock at Naruto's unexpected behavior. Sakura inquired, What is it, sensei? As Naruto also looked at Kakashi while doing the dishes, Tsunami standing next to him to pad dry the cleaned utensils. The Junin said, In between the journey, I received a messenger bird from Konoha. Hokage. Sama is sending another team to investigate Gato's business here in Wave, which caused Sakura to sidelong glance at him. Why would he? It's because the economy of Land of Waves, after Gato established a monopoly over the shipping business, has gone downhill. People here are willing to open fair trade routes desperately. The bridge which Tazuna. San is building will connect this land to the land of fire, opening a trade route. Which ultimately would be in the benefit of both Nami no Kuni and Hai no Kuni. Konoha has been receiving orders recently from Fire Daimyo to look into this matter and see if we can convince Gato from leaving this land. Of course the Leaf Village can't do this by force since we ourselves trade with Gato and we have to maintain our business with him. And since we're already on this mission of helping Tazuna. San in completing the bridge, Hokage. Sama knows that this is the best time to strike. While we go on with our mission, the coming team will attempt to negotiate with him, and I do mean a business negotiation where anything is fair. As the blonde carried on cleaning dishes, everyone turned to stare at him in shock and surprise. Sakura questioned, a little embarrassed that she wasn't supposed to know all of that information. H. How do you know all of this? She asked. He said, I already knew some of the basic facts, it's general knowledge now. The rest of it was deduced by me, it's common sense, to Tsunami's amazed look and Sasuke's light sneer. He rolled his eyes and said, common sense for you, more like nerdy sense for us. Ever since after knowing the truth about this mission, one thing was bugging me. Hokage. Sama knows about Gato's stunts here in Wave. Then he must have known that the life of a bridge builder like Tazuna, who was attempting to construct a bridge which would ruin Gato's business here, would be in danger. Then why would he believe Tazuna? Sans obvious lie and declare the rank of this mission as C. Rank? I guess this latest move by Hokage. Sama solves the mystery. He deliberately sent Team 7 on this mission, knowing Kakashi. Sensei would be with us. Then using that as an excuse, he sends another team for negotiations with Gato. Guess he was just looking for an excuse to interfere here in Wave, and Yutazuna. San, gave him that excuse, he explained, now washing his hands to look at him. Tazuna asked, the Jinchuriki sighing, half. Lidded eyes. Uh. Care to repeat that again? Sakura was taken aback, as she had never imagined their leader to be so forward. Thinking. But. But. Is that the way the world of Shinobi operated? Is this the extent of their cage's cunning and cleverness? Naruto said gravely, leaning against the counter while Tsunami stood silently behind him. In other words, he always knew you were lying Tazuna. San, he said. The bridge builder's expression was one of shock, and Kakashi nodded in agreement with Naruto while scolding himself behind his back for not considering things more carefully than his blonde pupil. With an accusing gaze, Sasuke asked, how come you didn't figure it out sensei? As all eyes turned to him, causing the Junin to start perspiring. He sheepishly smiled, ahihi. You see. As Sakura looked at him with disillusionment. With a sly smile that caused the copy ninja to perspire, Naruto said, if he had the time to lift his nose from his porn literature, he would have, causing Tsunami to gasp in surprise behind him. How could you? She practically cried, causing the silver. Haired Junin to sighed. Eye her anxiously. You read such filthy books in front of these children? Sakura made a slight smile at Naruto as Sasuke gave him an encouraging thumps up from behind. M. Ma Ma. It's not like I let them read it, defended Kakashi, stepping back from Tsunami's lethal glare as he stood from his chair. Innocently, Naruto asked, giving the Junin a glare in return. What about the time you offered me to read it? And before that, what about the introduction you gave us? Introduction? Both Tsunami and Tazuna asked, looking back at Naruto, bewildered. With a gleam in his eyes, Kakashi's prankster blood coming to life, he started shaking his head angrily at Naruto and pleading with his hands in the prayer position. Ah! What was it again? Ah yes, here it goes, Naruto said, 
straining his back and reaching for a cookbook that was resting on the other slab. He leaned idly against the counter, imitating Kakashi's pose precisely by pulling down his hide. Ate over his right eye and burying the lower portion of his face in the opened book. The blonde coughed to get started, and Sakura was barely holding it in when Sasuke bit his cheek from the inside to keep from laughing aloud. My name is Hitaki Kakashi. My likes include reading Icha. Icha series written by Jiraiya. Sama, my favorite of them being the Icha. Icha make out tactics. I also like peeping on women in the hot springs, watching porn whenever I get the time, big breasts. Like Tsunade. Sama. Even though I'm a virgin, still, the positions I like, at least hypothetically are. Doggy style, missionary and reverse cowgirl. The only dislike I have is youthful guys. No, a certain youthful guy. My hobbies include reading Icha Icha, cursing a certain youthful guy whenever I can and masturbating regularly. The dreams for future is to form a large harem of big-breasted women, spread the youthfulness of Icha Icha and one day write an Icha Icha myself. Any questions? His face continued to darken a shade of red during the introduction with a proud expression. Sasuke had abruptly left during the introduction, barely able to contain his laughter as he went to the restroom while covering his mouth in an unusual way. Right now, Kakashi was cowering in fear, a black cloud hovering over his head as he wondered only one thing. How on earth did he manage to commit all of that to memory? With a sly smile on her face and red eyes, Tsunami slowly turned her head and cracked her knuckles. He stammered out his true final wish, and she asked, any last wishes? C. Can I s. Suck on y. Your b. Breasts. Whoa. Die. The house echoed with painful girlish screams for the next few minutes, all the while Sakura was rolling on the floor laughing uncontrollably and crying out, porn. Sensei got whacked. When Naruto heard more laughter coming from the restroom, he laughed and shook his head. With a horrified expression, Tazuna covered his jewels with his hands, shielding them from harm. Beside him, a completely burnt outbook twitched and lay on the ground. Tsunami asked, grinning, Do you want anything else, Naruto? San? Which caused the blonde to shake his head. He muttered, giving her a small bow and saying, No, the food was great. Arigato Tsunami. San, which made her laugh. She said, Ah, you're so cute and ruffled his hair. The blonde entered the kitchen and flushed brightly. Adorable? A wave of nostalgia swept over him at that moment. Make a knock, make a knock. The sound of a knock on the door startled the blonde out of his reverie. I'll get it, he said over his shoulder as he moved in the direction of the door, dodging soccer as now. Slowly. Diminishing laughter and his sensei's twitching mass. Reaching for the doorknob, he pulled it open. Why am I not taken aback? Sighing quietly, Naruto looked at the three figures in front of him and thought. He frowned and said, I assume you are the backup team about which Hokage. Sama sent us a message? Shikaku nodded, Inoichi and Shuza at his side, saying, of course. The Jinchuriki bowed his head and saw a dog wearing a Konoha Hite. 8. You're forgetting me, Blondie, he said. The summons of Kakashi. Sensei? He pondered. The four of them walked into the house, and the blonde moved aside without saying anything. Shikaku, Inoichi, Shuza. Kakashi greeted his allies and seemed to be fine, although Naruto wasn't sure how. The silver. Haired Junin said, Tsunami. San, Tazuna. San. This is the backup team Hokage. Sama sent us. They are also called the Ino. Shika. Show trio of Konoha, as Tazuna and Tsunami both bowed in greeting. As Inoichi said, judging by the conditions of your town, we will not be imposing much on you. Kakashi, you and your team will continue with your mission while we will depart tomorrow to begin our mission, Tsunami and Kakashi nodded in agreement. Standing next to Kakashi now, Sakura inquired, where will you be going? We'll camp out for the remainder of our mission. Gato's temporary base is several miles east of here, Shuza said in a rough voice as Naruto shut the door, a tiny frown on his face should have anticipated this. It's obvious that they want to watch me while also finding a solution to the Gato issue. They'll be on my ass once more after Kakashi. Ni. San tells them how the Demon Brothers had oddly posed as suicide bombs. Not that it's a major issue. Later on that evening. 
As he took the clean dishes from her, Naruto grinned and said, Here, let me set the table tsunami. San. This made her shake her head slightly. She said, lightly grabbing his shoulder and shoving him out of the kitchen. You're already helping us enough as it is, she said. Sakura observed with wide eyes how Naruto was sulking at the woman. What the heck, do I see things? Has her icy blonde teammate suddenly lost it? The blonde argued as he walked back into the kitchen, making the older woman smile warmly. Sakura was still standing at the foot of the stairs, blinking owlishly. But I want to help Tsunami. San. That's the least I can do. Besides, there's so many for you to feed, you could really use some help, the blonde said. When the pink. Haired Kunoichi heard Sasuke's voice and saw the Uchiha coming down the stairs, she snapped her head back, asking, what's up? Sakura turned around and gestured to the kitchen with her index finger. Sasuke walked down to stand beside her, now staring at the blonde helping Tsunami with the kitchen work. Naruto is acting really weird. Ever since we stepped into this land, more like this house. He has smiled more times than since Team 7 was formed. He's not cold anymore and talks more, mainly to Tsunami. San though. He just offered her his help with setting the table, she refused. And. And he pouted in response. Can you believe it? The Kunoichi said quietly. The Uchiha muttered, hands in his pockets, HN, he's got the hots for that woman, and headed out the door for his emo walk into the starry, dark night. There he goes for one of his emo walks, Sakura moaned as she descended the final flight of stairs and fixed her gaze on a beaming Naruto who was laying the tablecloth. Does he enjoy Tsunami? San? She thought, her lips quivering, as Tazuna, looking down from his room upstairs, heard Sasuke through the slit in his slightly open door. His brow sharpened into a glare at the blonde working. I was aware of it. That blonde is attempting to access my daughter's underwear. I can't let that happen as her accountable father. When Naruto eventually saw Sakura standing there, he said, Hey Sakura, grinning. The Kunoichi blushed a shade of pink, and her eyes grew wide. It's the first time he's ever grinned at me like that. She laughed softly and stammered, Oh. Oh. H. Helping Tsunami. San I see, rubbing the back of her head. The blonde gave her a perplexed look as she set down the plates. His question, Why do you look so nervous? made her sigh silently. Damn his analytical abilities, he could tell a person's true feelings from their body language, especially when it came to her. The Jinchuriki gave her a bored look and began to head back into the kitchen, saying, Oh come on, W. Why would you think I would be nervous? The blonde said over his shoulder, making Tsunami cover her mouth with her palm as she stifled a giggle and Sakura feel her cheeks heat up in embarrassment as she averted her gaze. You're stuttering, you're laughing awkwardly with your eyes closed, your right hand is rubbing the back of your neck, your left eyebrow is tilted upwards a little more than the right one, your right toe is tipped with the floor. Yeah, if you're not nervous, I'm willing to admit that Sasuke is not a gay, the blonde said over his shoulder. Naruto gave her a quick look over his shoulder and then grinned a little. I knew it, he is a gay. Tsunami burst out laughing as Sakura yelled, hey I never agreed to that. While handing him the big rice bowl. He said, well you did agree you were nervous, which pertains to the fact that you agree he is gay, as Sakura sputtered in denial and he now placed the bowl on the table. But Tsunami decided to intervene and save the unfortunate girl. Sakura. San, would you mind calling the others downstairs for dinner? The woman with dark hair exclaimed, sure. In response to the Kunoichi's prompt reply as she hurried up the stairs. Turning to face Naruto, she said, my, you guys get along well don't you? He paused for a second before grinning slightly. He muttered under his breath, I guess. After 30 minutes. Inoichi got up and said, thanks for the dinner, Tsunami. San, followed by Shikaku and Shuza. It was a pleasure, Yamanaka. San, the woman with dark hair grinned in response. Despite Kakashi's initial objections, Naruto was filling her bowl and assisting Tsunami in serving others. Shikaku got up, followed by Inoichi and Shuza, and the three of them left for their upstairs room. Shikaku cast a sidelong glance at Naruto before heading into his room. The blonde gave him his own icy blue eyes in return. Tsunami turned back to face Shikaku, surprised by the sudden coldness in his eyes as the Nara entered his room and shut the door. At present, Sakura, Sasuke, 
Tazuna, and Kakashi were seated near the table, enjoying their dinner. Naruto, please bring me some rice, smirking mockingly as he held up his bowl, causing the blonde to narrow his eyes in response. Sakura and Kakashi sighed at the Uchiha's antics, as he was always trying to outdo Naruto but was never successful in doing so. While the whiskered blonde filled Sasuke's bowl, Tsunami watched them amusedly and gave Tazuna some water. Oh, and some water too, the Uchiha said, his expression innocent, passing Naruto his empty glass. With a knowing gaze, the blonde looked at Sasuke and then reached for the glass. Sakura moaned, looking bored, while the genin with the raven hair was grinning triumphantly. Oh come on Sasuke! Kun! Sakura said. Taking his chopsticks, he started eating his rice while grinning and nodding to himself several times. He felt a sense of success rising within him. Brother, I'm getting closer to winning this battle. Talk about having hallucinations. Naruto started filling the glass and turned on the tap. You know Sasuke, Sakura earlier agreed with me that you're a gay. F-P-H-R-U-U-U. With a spray, Sasuke sprayed rice out of his mouth onto Tazuna's face, who was left staring in shock. The Uchiha wiped his mouth and cried, what? Sakura turned in her seat and yelled back to Naruto, defiantly, I did not. You did not what? Sasuke questioned Sakura, causing her to turn to face him while defensively waving her hands in front of her. I did not say that yo. Naruto went on, she did not say that you were not gay, thus indirectly agreeing to the fact that you were a gay. He turned to face the table again. Naruto! shouted Sakura. When Naruto approached Sasuke with the glass of water, he appeared serious. Sakura, do you really think that way? She asked as she turned back to face him. Sakura stood up and exclaimed, of course not Sasuke. Kun! I don't think so. Sasuke sighs with relief as he reclines in his chair as tears form at the corner of Sakura's eyes. With a triumphant grin, the Uchiha took the blonde's glass and started to drink the liquid. Naruto patted himself on the back and said, see? She doesn't think that you're not gay, thus again indirectly agreeing to the fact that you are in fact a gay. P-F-R-U-U-G-H. What? Once more, the Uchiha's mouth sprayed water, striking Tazuna's rice. Decorated face with the forceful spray. Sakura exclaimed, of course not Sasuke. Kun with puppy dog eyes. Naruto gave his friend a mocking pat on the back and said, come on buddy, it's not like it's a bad thing. I'm sure you'll find some pedophile out there who cares for you, which caused a certain snake Sanin to sneeze unintentionally. The Uchiha grunted as he got up from his chair and walked back towards the door, out into the starry, dark night for his emo walk. This time, though, his mind was filled with thoughts of how embarrassing it would be for his teammates to think of him as gay instead of killing his brother. Naruto grinned broadly in satisfaction and thought, there he goes on his emo walk again. When Tsunami started laughing, Sakura snorted and said, damn you Naruto. Kakashi also started laughing to himself. When the door opened, the blonde shrugged and said, what? He started it. Tsunami hurried to her son and said, aw Inari. Where were you? While Naruto gave Inari a serious glance. Tsunami turned to look at Inari worriedly as he walked by and murmured, I'm fine. The girl with dark hair asked, smiling, oh, these are the shinobi father hired today for the completion of the bridge. Aren't you happy? As the boy cast a gloomy glance at Team 7. Whatever, he muttered as he moved toward the stairs, causing Sakura to furrow her brow in response to his demeanor, while Naruto simply continued to look at the boy. The blonde asked gravely, Tazuna. San, is he your grandson? The elderly man nodded, still cursing the Uchiha's table manners as he wiped his face. When Kakashi got up from his chair, Tsunami looked away and said, I'm sorry for the way he acted. It's just. It's no big deal Tsunami. San, everyone has their own problems. We can understand. Thank you for the meal. Sakura got up as well and went to her room, followed by Dezuna, but not before glaring at the blonde to confuse the Jinchuriki. As Naruto started gathering the dishes, Tsunami scowled at him. Here, let me help you wash the dishes, he said. She hurried to his side and exclaimed, Oh no you don't, young man. Tsunami grabbed the plates out of his hand and pushed him into the chair. The glare she was giving him said it all, You've already helped me enough as it is. Now just relax and eat your dinner. He gave her a slight frown, and the blonde sighed. 
Naruto said, his expression neutral, it's not for the formality tsunami. San, I help you because I like doing it, which caused her to giggle a little. She bowed to give him a cheek kiss, saying, ah, that's so sweet of you, Naruto. San, and then she carried the dishes into the kitchen. Now just sit there and we can eat together. Naruto's hand crept up to his facial hair and he gently stroked it, his expression bewildered. That was a strange one. Was it something I said to cheer her up? Midnight. One mile from Tazuna's residence. Riot, who was now floating above Naruto, who was lounging on a thick branch of a large tree and staring at the moon, said, So, that Nara guy, the mind reading guy, and the fat one are here huh? What do you plan to do now? The blonde was staring at the moon with that same contemplative, serious expression on his face. He sighed and said, I've already made my move. Let's see what happens. The Shinigami answered right away, appearing to be in a trance. What about the problem regarding Konoha? How do you plan to kill the criminals there? If you don't while you're away, naturally they'll suspect you, he said. That will be taken care of too. Though I don't trust the solution to this, still. The job will be done. Lying next to the blonde, Ryuk asked, what's wrong, you don't seem like yourself. Is something troubling you? And the blonde nodded in response. The Shinigami's eyes widened in surprise as he muttered, nothing. With a smile on his face. It was a genuine, warm smiley the kind of emotion a Shinigami saw in a human when he or she was happier rather than a sly smirk or that clever smile of his that promised some sort of accomplishment on his part. What has become of him? He was so aloof and cold in Konoha. When Naruto's eyes widened slightly as he stood up, the Shinigami thought to himself, and now, look at him, smiling like that. Let's go. Huh? The Shinigami asked, his eyes wide with confusion as the blonde leapt from the tree and ran in an erratic direction. Ryuk flailed his wings and let out a loud, oi. Before trailing Naruto. Where are we going? The Jinchuriki whispered, you'll see, as he pulled out a page of the death note and looked at the name written on it. A few minutes later, unidentified clearance. A second blonde figure emerged from the bushes as the first stood alone in a clearing, a gentle breeze caressing the leaves. Ryuk, who was floating next to Naruto, asked, I see, so you're controlling the mind reading guy huh? Both of them remained silent as the Jinchuriki fixed his serious gaze on the blonde person in front of him. The fair. Haired blonde approached the silhouette that was standing. He was about to speak when he suddenly found himself immobile. Got you, Shikaku's voice behind Naruto was instantly recognized by him. I think he saw me with his shadow. The blonde didn't panic. He was immobile and couldn't turn around. He immediately realized what they were doing when he felt a hand land on his head after hearing some commotion behind him. When the hand was removed from his head, the place fell silently. Naruto recognized Kusho's voice. The boy has little bit of blanks here and there since the mission started. But after past hour or so, there's nothing but a plain blank, just up until now. He's not being controlled right now, the voice said. The Jinchuriki tried to move but was still immobile. W. What's going on? Why are you guys here? I just came here for some late night training, he said, confused. Huh? What's going on here? Why are you guys here? Inoichi asked after that, his eyes bewildered. Shikaku said, Inoichi stay put, we need to check your memories, in his shadow. As Kusho moved forward and eventually entered the blonde's field of vision, Naruto remained motionless. The Yamanaka said, just a few seconds ago, the blank ended. The control over him was lifted, as Naruto began to feel like he could move. He pivoted to squint his eyes at Shikaku. He was furious as Shikaku moved forward, a bored expression on his face. What's the meaning of this? First you frame me back in Konoha for being Kira and now you play this drama here? He cried. Sorry kid, but while on this mission, we also need to keep an eye on you. Hokage. Sama's worried for you and we are just following orders. The blonde frowned and asked, what orders? Can't I even train alone here? While the Nara sighed and muttered something about being, troublesome. Listen, you probably don't know this, but you were under Kira's control a minute ago, and so was Inoichi. When we reached here, the control over both of you was lifted. Kira has this strange power that after the control over the victim has been lifted, he or she will feel that, wherever or whatever they were doing after coming back to their consciousness, it was according to their will. Hence it won't seem strange to them. Same is happening to you, you think you were here to train and that we just disturbed you. 
it's something your subconsciousness came up with on itself. Same is happening with Inoichi, Shikaku said with a neutral expression. Naruto cast a suspicious glance at the Nara before turning to face Inoichi, who also appeared perplexed. He turned back to the Nara, and the blonde sighed. With an insecure expression on his face, he asked, so you mean to say that Kira has come after me even here? And why would he control both me and Inoichi just for us to meet up here? Shikaku pocketed his hands and looked up, chuckling to himself. He said, Uzumaki Naruto. If you really are Kira, I applaud you good sir. You have guts. This situation makes perfect sense if you were Kira. However, if you aren't Kira, my questions are the same as yours, before leaping onto a branch above Inoichi and Kusho. He spoke loudly over his shoulder, if you really are Kira Naruto, really. I'd nominate you for the best actor award of all time. Fujikazi Yukie would be no match for you. Kusho said, we'll be leaving, you can keep training. Oyasumi Nasai, and the three jumped farther into the forest. When Naruto heard Ryuk, he stood motionless for a few seconds. With a sigh, the Shinigami said, well, that was unexpected, and a total waste, as the blonde kept staring at the location where Shikaku stood on the branch. He said, no, it served its purpose, which caused Ryuk to look at him strangely. What purpose? Naruto took out a storage scroll and sat on the grass. I've opened several blank death note pages and now I know who else came with Inoichi, Shikaku, and Shuza. Come on now, we've got work to do, the Jinchuriki said. We'll be taking our leave, you can continue to train. Oyasumi Nasai. Kusho uttered before the trio leapt deeper into the forest. Naruto stood there for several seconds when he heard Ryuk. Well that was unexpected, and a total waste, the Shinigami verbalized with a sigh while the blonde continued to stare at the spot where Shikaku was standing on the branch. No, it served its purpose, he spoke making Ryuk look at him in confusion. What purpose? Naruto sat on the grass as he pulled out a storage scroll. I now know who else came with Inoichi, Shikaku and Shuza. Come on now, we've got work to do, the Jinchuriki articulated after unsealing several blank pages of Death Note. The following morning, forests near Tazuna's house. Well, as we already know, Zabuza along with his companion escaped yesterday. And we can expect them to strike again soon, whenever they recover that is. Aside from carrying the mission, I want you to utilize the time and train yourselves, Kakashi spoke in his usual lethargic tone, hands in both of his pockets. Team 7 stood in front of him with serious expressions with the exception of a certain blonde as he yawned loudly before rubbing his eyes lazily. What will we be training in Sensei? Naruto asked with half-lidded eyes when the silver-haired Junin, I smiled. You're fresh out of the academy team, so is your Junin instructor, I think we'll start with the basic chakra control exercises, he worded making Sasuke and Sakura nod as a sigh escaped the Jinchuriki's lips. What? You look rather bored today. I guess it's understandable considering you don't have someone to kill huh? Riot chuckled in amusement while the blonde just ignored him. It doesn't sound much of a training to me, Sasuke uttered with a serious look on his face making Kakashi chuckle lightly. Let's see then, the Junin began to walk towards one of the larger trees surrounding them before he placed his right foot on the bark. So basically we have to lift our leg like a urinating mutt and then control this thing called chakra? I agree with the UK boy here, not much of a training really, Ryuk articulated while shaking his head before his eyes slowly widened as he watched Kakashi start to walk up the tree, his feet sticking to the bark. Holy father of Spider-Man. How is the Cyclops doing that? The Shinigami exclaimed in surprise while Naruto had a bored look on his face. I see, basic ninja stuff huh? Sasuke uttered as Kakashi landed on the ground. Yes, the basics, something which we can't ignore, taking out three kanai, he hurled them towards his students as they stuck in the ground right in front of them. You have to apply chakra to the base of your feet to stick to the surface. Too much chakra, the wood will give away and you'll fall off. Lesser chakra will make you slip off the amount has to be perfect. To start, try running towards the tree, and as you get higher and higher, keep marking on the trunk with the kanai just before you fall to track your progress, he explained when Naruto yawned again making the Junin glance at him. I see, Sasuke muttered as he pulled out the kanai in front of him. Oh, the UK boy wants to try it out. Let's see how he fares in this, Ryuk spoke, now sitting on the ground beside Naruto as the Uchiha made a dash towards the tree. Speeding upwards till a few meters, the spot under his feet creaked under the pressure of his chakra as he slashed the kanai on the bark. 
Naruto watched as Sasuke landed on the ground. Impressive, that's pretty high for a first try, Kakashi voiced as the raven-haired genin turned to his blonde teammate, giving him a challenging smirk. The Jinchuriki sighed as he shook his head, rubbing the back of his neck in exasperation. How high do we have to go sensei? Sakura asked while Naruto began to walk towards the tree. As far as you can. The main motive of this exercise is both chakra control and to increase your chakra reserves, Kakashi uttered making her look at him in confusion. Increase our chakra reserves? The pink-haired genin questioned as the junin turned to her. Yep, what I mean I. Is this high enough sensei? The duo turned upwards to find Naruto standing horizontal to the tree's trunk several meters high while Sasuke had a look of surprise on his face. Well, not much of a surprise. I did expect you'd already know this, Kakashi said while Sakura stared at Naruto with wide eyes. Hey whoa. You didn't tell me you could do this, Ryuk exclaimed, hovering beside Naruto up there. The blonde however, ignoring the Shinigami, narrowed his eyes at his sensei. Crouching back towards the surface of the trunk, his back facing it, his feet began to slide downwards. Hey watch out! Sakura shouted, fearing for her teammate standing at such a height. The blonde continued to slide downwards, his velocity increasing while Sasuke's eyes widened to now. Naruto! She screamed as he continued to slide down at high speeds while Kakashi just stood there. K-H-R-R-K-K. Sakura breathed out in relief when the blonde stopped sliding abruptly, his feet hanging in midair with the palm of his right hand resting on the surface of the tree's trunk. This exercise Sakura is for increasing your chakra reserves. You support your entire body weight with just your hand, applying chakra through it to stick to the tree. In this case, the chakra needed is much larger as compared to the tree walking exercise, which is a chakra control exercise. Junin in general are able to support themselves on one hand with just chakra for about 30 seconds, mainly because this exercise drains chakra fast, he explained before landing on the ground while Sasuke and Sakura continued to stare at him. As expected of him, even while standing at such height, he was able to listen in to her question. His presence of mind and enhanced senses are amazing, Kakashi mused while gazing at the blonde. How is just hanging by your hand using chakra different from walking on the tree? Shouldn't both be the same chakra control exercises? The net chakra required to stick to the surface in both cases should be same, Sasuke questioned, clearly annoyed at the fact that his blonde teammate was always a step ahead of him. Kakashi lifted his finger to explain when Naruto beat him to it. It's rather simple. In the tree walking exercise, you have two sources to apply chakra through, which are both of your feet. However in this, you have to put higher amount of chakra through only your one hand. Concentrating that amount of chakra at one point, and maintaining it so that you don't fall off, is more difficult. More chakra means it is more difficult to control it. Hence, you'll just have more trouble in controlling your chakra in this as well maintaining the flow, this will in turn increase your chakra reserves as well as improve your control. Basically, it's a modified version of tree walking exercise, the whiskered blonde explained making Kakashi sweat drop. There he does again, stealing my role. Sasuke however sighed as he rubbed his forehead, muttering, whatever, under his breath. Get to it then you too. And Naruto, why? I already know the water walking exercise. I'm going to the bridge, the Jinchuriki spoke as he began to walk out of the area while Sasuke and Sakura just stared at him. Again. He's. Rather strange, and hard to understand, isn't he sensei? Sakura asked turning to her right only to sweat drop upon noticing her sensei sitting under a shady tree with a dark cloud over his head, muttering about his student acting cooler than him. Turning back, she gazed as Sasuke landed back on the ground after climbing to just above his previous height. Well there he goes again, trying to beat Naruto again. Tazuna's house, 9.48pm. Really Naruto? Kun, you should sit down and eat. I can manage by myself. Look, even Sakura. San now is being forced to do the formalities. Please, you've helped me enough already, Tsunami spoke, more like pleaded as the blonde served Kakashi some rice while Sakura filled Tazuna's empty cup with sake. The pink-haired Kunoichi smiled as she turned to Tsunami. Don't worry Tsunami. San, really? We're glad to help you in any way we can. You are our client, so it's our job to make sure you are satisfied, the older woman sighed while Inari was quietly eating, sitting opposite to Kakashi. Where is that brooding kid? Tazuna questioned after taking a gulp of his sake making Sakura sigh. He's out training in the woods. 
I asked him to come just a while ago, but he just won't listen. He wants to complete the tree walking exercise tonight and catch up to Naruto, she said with a roll of her eyes making Kakashi chuckle lightly. Don't worry, he can handle himself. I sure hope so, we need some heroes here to really transform the condition of this place. It's been way too long for Gato's reign to continue here, Tazuna uttered making Tsunami nod. Of course, we will make sure that bridge is completed, Naruto spoke with determination, a small smile on his face with Sakura nodding with him. And I'll take care of Gato if he shows his face. And I'll make sure your stomachs are full for the job, Tsunami joked while waving her pan making them laugh, except Naruto as he smiled at her. Shut up. The table creaked as Inari slammed his small hands on it, pushing his chair onto the floor with a jerk. You guys are just idiots. Giving yourself false hopes of defeating Gato all by yourself. Pathetic. The little boy exclaimed. Inari. Tsunami scolded with a frown as the boy lifted his face to glare at Naruto. Just helping serve some food won't save this country. You think it's all easy but it's not. It disgusts me to see you so-called ninja taking it so easy while people are dying out there. Inari screamed, panting a little while Team 7 looked at him in surprise. Inari just shut up and go upstairs. Tsunami spoke harshly as she walked around the table to grab his shoulder tightly. Wriggling out of her grasp forcefully, he again turned to Naruto. Damn this kid looks pissed. I think he's mad that you were flirting with his mother Naruto, Ryuk muttered while the blonde continued to stare at the black-haired boy. Just a group of four people can't save a whole town from a tyrant such as Gato. You guys are just trying to be heroes. Well listen here, heroes don't exist. If you want to fight Gato, do it with common sense. Don't just laugh it out carelessly and say you're going to complete this bridge without a plan. Gato won't just sit back and let you idiots do as you please. Inari. Tsunami shouted back as she lifted her hand to slap him. Thup. Tsunami watched in surprise to see Naruto holding her wrist firmly. A serious expression on his face. Inari just squeezed his eyes shut as tears started to roll down his cheeks, his mother's hand inches away from his cheek. Naruto. Sakura mumbled. Loosening his grip on her wrist, the Jinchuriki turned to the silently crying boy as he put his left hand on his shaking shoulder. Inari opened his glossy eyes to look at him, a startled countenance on his face. Inari right? He asked with a small smile as the boy nodded slowly. Well, my name is Uzumaki Naruto. Nice to meet you, the whiskered blonde gave him a small grin, completely blowing away Sakura and Kakashi with his uncharacteristic behavior. Tsunami and Tazuna too were looking at him strangely. Ryuk however just stared at Naruto, taken aback by the blonde's behavior considering the circumstances. Had someone spoke to the blonde like this in Konoha, the Shinigami was sure the person's name would have been in the death note within the next few minutes. Not knowing how to respond to the awkward situation, Inari just averted his gaze when he felt the same hand on his head. Don't worry, I'm not the type of guy to just barge in without a plan. I always have a plan, lifting his head, Inari glanced at a smirking Naruto as the blonde began to walk towards the door. Don't ever lose hope, without it. There's no difference between you and a dead person. We'll save this town alright. Everyone stared outside through the open door after the Jinchuriki had left, quite startled at noticing the odd determination in the blonde's voice. Forests near Tazuna's house, 10-12 pm. Damn it. Why can't I do this? This is ridiculous. Sasuke exclaimed in frustration as he punched the ground, currently crouched while panting heavily. There were several slash marks on the tree's trunk in front of him. Naruto already is perfect at this exercise while Sakura did this on the first try. How can I expect to ever surpass that Dobi and beat Itachi? The Uchiha glared at his fists, gritting his teeth in anger as he lifted his head with a jerk. Taking out another kanai, he bolted towards the tree. The raven-haired genin began to sprint up the tree, chakra applied to his feet as he stared at the top. I have to beat him. I have to surpass him first. Ah. Uh. Sasuke grunted as his foot slipped a bit on the wood. Still running upwards, one of his feet put a dent on the bark as he lost his balance. The Uchiha began to fall as he planted his hands on the trunk, trying to control his descending body. His hands skidded on the wood as he approached the ground. Arg! Finding a sharp tip of wood protruding a bit from the bark, blood sprayed out of his hand as he lost his grip due to the sharp pain. Thud! 
Sasuke's body rolled violently on the ground as he skidded to a halt, inducing dust in his path. He laid there for a few seconds before slowly picking himself by his elbows. Coughing out some blood, he lifted his bleeding right hand. The Uchiha gritted his teeth as he stared at the cut on his hand, drops of blood falling onto the grass. Working pretty hard, or rather. Falling pretty hard, Hateme? Snapping his head up, he narrowed his eyes into a glare upon noticing Naruto standing in front of him, leaning against the tree. What do you want? He spat, standing up with some difficulty as the blonde crossed his arms in front of his chest. Darn, the emo boy looks pretty pissed off, Ryuk commented while the Jinchuriki raised an eyebrow at Sasuke's question, a smirk on his face. Why, I was just checking on my teammate, Naruto uttered as the raven-haired Genin wiped the blood of his chin. If you have come to mock me, get the fuck out of here. He growled, his eyes dark while the blonde's eyes widened a bit as he stared into Sasuke's onyx orbs. Such hatred, is it for me? Or for your brother? The whiskered blonde questioned in amusement, not affected by his teammate's dark mood. Don't mention him in front of me Uzumaki. Do not interfere in other people's business. Sasuke exclaimed, glaring menacingly at his teammate. Naruto frowned as he pushed himself off the tree, his eyes gaining a cold look. I don't understand, why are you so angry? Is it the fact that I already knew the tree walking exercise and you still haven't been able to do it? Is it because Sakura got it on her first try and you still can't do it properly? Naruto got his answer as Sasuke's eyes widened a bit before setting back into a glare. Shut up. I will surpass you and kill that traitor. The Uchiha shouted. The Jinchuriki sighed as he shook his head, a bored look on his face. Such immaturity, I feel like I'm talking to a little kid who only sees what is shown to him. A kid who only understands what he's made to understand. So easily manipulated. You're still so innocent, so naive. I'm innocent? I'm naive? Sasuke's clenched fists were shaking in anger as drops of blood fell down his injured right hand. I lost my fucking innocence that night. You think I'm just some simple 12-year child who hasn't seen the darker side of this world. How dare you call me naive you asshole. I'm sick of your high and almighty attitude, as if you know everything. You think you're some freaking god who knows everything huh? It's your fucking arrogance that pisses me off. Sasuke shouted in rage, panting afterwards as silence ensued between the duo for several seconds. He, 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 he. Naruto began to chuckle as he lowered his head. The irony. Naruto told me the same thing the day I met him, Raik thought with a serious expression as he remembered the blonde's exact words. I know that some of my reasons are selfish. I'm also killing those who have been beating me since I was thrown out of the orphanage. It's selfish of me I know. But I'm a human too Ryuk. And I will never forget that. That's why I can never be a god. I'm not a saint who can just bear whatever shit people throw at me. Then it's more of a disappointment that you haven't matured after seeing the dark side, the blonde began to walk towards his raven-haired teammate, hands in his pockets. Why you? The Uchiha growled as he took a threatening step forward. Yes, I accept that I can be arrogant. But can you blame me, you may call me arrogant here again. But can you blame me seeing my abnormally sharp and philosophical mind? I'm sometimes arrogant yes, but that arrogance is what makes me human. Stop talking in circles. Sasuke fired as Naruto continued. It's basic human nature Sasuke. I've been dealing with your arrogant attitude during the whole of academy, in fact, all the students and teachers have been dealing with your arrogance right? And why? Why were you arrogant? It's because you excelled in the academy. You were the top of the class, the best in everything. And that, without even you realizing it, made you arrogant. It's something that most of us can't avoid. The greater the talent in something one possesses, more is the tendency for him or her to get arrogant to some level. So basically, the fact that I'm arrogant makes me human, not some almighty god which you just accused me, the whiskered blonde articulated as his raven-haired teammate clutched his bangs in frustration. Riot could tell that Naruto was just playing with the Uchiha, deliberately riling him up. This, this is what exactly I'm talking about. You're no. It. All attitude, as if you know everything. It. It infuriates me. God damn it it angers me so much. He waved his hand down violently while Naruto just stared at him with a neutral look on his face. You remember what I told you that day, when we fought? The hell I know. 
I don't have time to record every philosophical shit you spout. Sasuke growled. I'm a mature dead last, while you're a childish rookie, the blonde voiced as the Uchiha narrowed his eyes, outwardly calming down a bit. Just get out of here Dobi, he uttered with a sigh before taking a deep breath while closing his eyes for a moment. Wham! Receiving a blurred fist to his right cheek, Sasuke flew back as he skidded on the ground to a halt. I swear you got more childish and immature as the days have passed. What a waste, Naruto said with an icy cold look in his eyes while Ryuk stared at the blonde in surprise. What has gotten into him? You. Fucking. Bastard. Springing to his feet, Sasuke darted forward as he threw a punch at the standing blonde. Grabbing his approaching forearm at lightning speeds, Naruto retaliated as his fist approached the Uchiha's nose. Lurching sideways, the blonde's fist grazing his cheek, Sasuke went for a kick at his teammate's midsection. Naruto flipped back at the last second. Planting his feet firmly on the ground, he dashed forward again with astounding speeds. Sasuke's eyes widened at the sudden speed of his teammate as he put both of his elbows in front of his face, blocking a devastating punch before receiving a blurred roundhouse kick to his midsection. Gar. The Uchiha grunted in pain, getting the wind knocked out of him as he lost his balance before toppling over backwards several times violently. Wow. You said the reason I win over you was because I used cheap tricks. Now look, you're losing even in a pure taijutsu fight, Naruto spoke, his legs still in midair, where he had kicked Sasuke as he pulled it down. Shish. Shut up. The raven-haired Jenin uttered in a low tone as he spat some blood, now standing up while he glared at the blonde. Seems to me you're getting weaker instead, seeing the smirk on Naruto's face made him see red as he charged in wildly, inducing dust behind him. Shut up. Reaching him, he unleashed a flurry of punches and kicks while Naruto began to dodge them, all the while having a smirk on his face. C. So easy, the Jinchuriki verbalized in between his dodging, flipping back to avoid an uppercut while Sasuke began to pant, his anger reaching new heights at the way his teammate was mocking him. Damn you. Giving a cry of rage, he boosted towards a crouched Naruto, his attacks getting faster while the blonde just kept on dodging them. Fight back you bastard. The Uchiha was panting heavily by now, sweating profusely as he continued to throw in wild punches and kicks, even using his elbows and knees. Do I? Need to? You can't even. Hit me, Naruto articulated while jumping back in the clearing, avoiding a knee thrust. Not having broken a sweat yet. That fucking smirk. Sasuke thought with gritted teeth, both of them staring at each other as the blonde dodged another one of his punches in slow motion. Come on, is this all a rookie of the year can do? So pitiful, the Jinchuriki mocked, standing with his back against a tree. Ducking down, he dodged a speedy punch as Sasuke's fist crushed a good chunk of wood, the Uchiha grimacing at the jolt of pain in his bloodied fist. You always had tunnel vision, not seeing anything else. Such a weak-hearted fool, or should I say, foolish little brother. Sasuke's eyes widened as he pulled out his fist from the tree with a jerk. What? Did you say? He turned around to glare at Naruto with deep hatred and malice, his fists shaking in unbridled fury while the wide smirk on the blonde's face only put fuel to the fire. Couldn't hear it, foolish little brother? The Uchiha lowered his face, his knuckles now bloody when he sped forward in blind rage, not seeing anything but Naruto's face. Fuck. You. His punches became wild, firing them rapidly as some of them began to connect with Naruto's stomach. The Jinchuriki however was only intent on dodging as he didn't attack back, jumping and leaping around in the clearing while Sasuke was clearly at his limits as he kept attacking relentlessly. So easy to anger. Naruto uttered after grabbing Sasuke's attacking elbow. So easy to manipulate, he further spoke with a smirk, both of their shoulders trembling due to the force. Damn you. Whom? Headbutting the blonde, making him stumble back in surprise, Sasuke landed a punch full force square on Naruto's face. Pulling the falling blonde with the sleeve of his jumpsuit, he again delivered a cracking punch to the blonde's cheek. The Jinchuriki went sailing back at whizzing speeds before crashing into a tree, wood splinters falling on the grass. Don't mock other people's sufferings. Never mock me. Not stopping for a moment, Sasuke darted towards the broken tree as he pulled back his fist before delivering it into the dust screen that had formed due to Naruto's collision. Bomb. The feeling of raw wood told the Uchiha he had missed. Ignoring the searing pain in his knuckles, 
he began to fire swift barrage of punches into the tree's trunk. The feel of some of them coming in contact with flesh along with the blonde's grunts and coughs giving him sickening satisfaction. Fuck you. Dom. How. Dare. You mock me. Wham. Motherfucker. B-H-O-M. Thup, thup. Now panting heavily, Sasuke's eyes widened when he felt both of his bloody fists being grabbed, the dust clearing for him to see a panting Naruto embedded into a crater, blood falling off his chin as he coughed lightly. T. Too weak. Still too weak, such weak punches Uchiha, the Jinchuriki muttered as he spat some blood at Sasuke's face, still smirking at the heated look on his teammate's face. Blood was dripping down both of their foreheads as Sasuke glared at Naruto with revulsion. Pushing himself out of the crater, the Jinchuriki pushed the exhausted Uchiha back making him stumble on his wobbly feet as he fell flat on his back, now lying on the ground. Come on now. I was just warming up Sasuke. Is that all you've got? What would your father say? He would be so ashamed of a weak little Uchiha like you huh? Naruto kept mocking while wiping the blood off his chin and forehead. Sasuke stood up slowly on his wobbly feet, a stubborn look on his face. I would never L. Loose to a guy like you. Not to why. You. I would die before I do. The blonde smirked as his teammate again rushed towards him. Sasuke's punches began to get slow and sluggish, the Uchiha panting heavily while Naruto kept dodging the attacks easily. See? So easily exhausted. How come there's such a difference between our skills? Naruto questioned, his expression suddenly getting serious, both of them standing several meters away from each other now. Sasuke however kept glaring at him through half. Lidded eyes. Stop. Stop preaching me. You know nothing. He exclaimed. I know. Everything, everything about you Uchiha Sasuke, Naruto verbalized with a dead serious look on his face as he stepped forward before pointing at him. As I said, you always had tunnel vision, not seeing what's surrounding you. However, I guess, sometimes that's good too huh? The amusing smirk on his blonde teammate's face confused Sasuke. What do you mean? He asked. Look behind you, glancing over his shoulder, the Uchiha's eyes widened in shock to see. Ground as he snapped his head back towards Naruto. He was standing horizontally on the tree's trunk. He had done it. He was standing using his chakra. H. How? The flabbergasted look on the Uchiha's face made Naruto chuckle, who too was standing above Sasuke on the same tree. As I said, you have tunnel vision, the confusion on the raven-haired Uchiha's face didn't edge away while Naruto began to walk towards him. And as I have said before, I never do anything without a reason. I don't win without a reason, I don't lose without a reason. I don't punch without a reason, and I don't let myself get punched without a reason, Naruto pointed towards his bleeding nose with a smirk making Sasuke's orb zoom out in shock. No way. I see. He was most probably letting the Uchiha take out his frustration on himself. The emo kid was so much engrossed in beating the shit out of Naruto that he lost all his inhibitions, not even realizing that he had climbed up the tree during their fighting, Ryuk thought, floating over the duo. Sasuke, having come down from his adrenaline high, started to lose consciousness as he began to lose his footing. His half-lidded eyes snapped open in surprise upon feeling his hand being grabbed. Teme, I know you're under a lot of pressure, but at least try not to let the ground slip from beneath you, Naruto mocked, his weight shifted downwards as he held a barely conscious Sasuke by his right hand. The Uchiha smiled slightly as he flashed the finger before losing consciousness making the blonde smirk at him. The Jinchuriki jumped down taking Sasuke with him before landing swiftly on the ground, hefting his teammate over his shoulder. You know, I gave up trying to figure your unpredictable head a long time ago. But this takes the cake. What the hell's going on here? I thought you merely hated the emo boy here. And look at you, taking care of him like he's your brother, Ryuk spoke with a bored tone while floating horizontally besides Naruto, his head propped up on his right elbow. The blonde was sporting a grim expression on his face as he started to trek towards Tazuna's house. It's nothing, just fulfilling a promise to his family. Tazuna's house, 10.27 PM. Kami. Sama. What happened to you? Naruto inwardly sighed, now standing in the living room, in front of a worried looking tsunami and Sakura. Sasuke. Kun too? Did you too get attacked? The pink haired Genin asked as the blonde set the Uchiha on the couch. 
No, we were just training and got a little injured, Naruto muttered as he took off his orange jacket. Training? You call all these injuries and bloodstains the result of this training, you do? Tsunami had a worried sick expression on her face as she analyzed the blonde with Sakura checking Sasuke. Ma, Tsunami. San, no need to worry. The boys just went through a rough training session, it's quite normal, Naruto lifted his head to notice Kakashi standing on the stairs, giving him a thumbs up along with an eye. Smile. Normal? What kind of people are you? You call torturing little children normal training? She exclaimed in anger making the Junin cower as he remembered the torture he went through in the afternoon. I guess you're right, take it easy boys. Good night. What a pussy, Riot commented with a disappointed sigh, Kakashi no longer present there. Take care of Sasuke first, I'll be alright Tsunami. San, Naruto spoke seriously making her glare at him. Shut up you, she reprimanded while the Shinigami noticed the warm look in the blonde's eyes in surprise as Tsunami bandaged his injuries. Cleaning the blood stains on him. I'll take this, she uttered after grabbing his jacket. Now go upstairs, change and give me these dirty clothes. I'll wash them later, she ordered making him sigh in defeat, not arguing with her. Sakura however, in between tending to Sasuke's injuries, glanced at the duo in surprise. Surprised at the way they were acting so familiarly with each other. The whiskered blonde climbed up the stairs when he spotted Inari looking at him through the small slit opening of his door. Looks like you found your mother huh? Ryuk chuckled. Shut up, Naruto muttered as he continued to walk up the stairs. Inari's room. What a bunch of idiots. They'll never understand, Inari, sitting on the dresser beside his bed in front of an open window thought as he gazed out into the ocean. He had a picture frame clutched to his chest, tears pouring down his cheeks. A light breeze was flowing as it cross-ventilated across the room. Light sobbing sounds could be heard inside the dark room as the boy stared at the picture frame with his glossy orbs. Why? Why did you leave me? You didn't have to try to be a hero. We. We could have fought together, Inari mused, clenching his eyes shut in grief as more tears cascaded down his cheeks. Nice weather huh? Wah. Giving out a girlish scream, the boy fell off the dresser. Thud. Inari groaned in pain as he sat up dizzily, massaging the back of his head. Opening his eyes, a surprised look took birth on his face upon noticing Naruto sitting on the edge of his bed, holding the same picture frame. I guess this was important to you, so sorry for not catching you instead of this, the blonde spoke in amusement as he set the frame on the dresser. Inari narrowed his eyes as he stood up quickly, wiping the liquid off his cheeks swiftly. For a dark 12-year-old genius and psychopath hell-bent on revenge as well as changing the world, you're stepping out of line to become awfully social aren't you? Ever thought of starting your own Facebook? Riot questioned innocently making the blonde glare at him from the corner of his eyes. Guess not. Wait, what the hell is Facebook anyway? Darn. I need to increase my intake of apples. What do you want? If ka. San has sent you, I don't want to eat dinner. I'm not hungry. Inari uttered sternly while picking his hat off the floor. Okay, now let's suppose we do in fact get killed by this maniac called Gato. Afterwards, what do you think is going to happen to this town of yours? Naruto asked, elbows on his knees as stared at the boy right in the eyes. Oh really, that means the ownership of the Death Note will return back to me. Aw oh, fuck yes. This is my lucky day pops. Riot grinned to himself. Inari however looked at the blonde with thinly veiled confusion as he put the hat on his head, his eyes becoming shadowed. It's going to go down the drain, that's what's gonna happen, he muttered. And you're just going to cry and watch as your town, goes down the drawn? Naruto inquired, a deride look on his face as the black haired boy looked at him sharply. What else can I do then? I'm only a kid. He exclaimed loudly. I'm a kid too, a 12 year old kid. But the difference between you and me is that I can kick several asses quite easily. In your case, those same asses can blow farts in your crying face that much easily. What do you have to say about that? The whiskered blonde cupped his chin with a smirk while Ryuk laughed at that. Shut up. I'm tired of your ninja boasts. You guys are all talk and nothing else. Inari burst out as he glared at Naruto who just shrugged to himself. Ninja boasts huh? Well then. Here, putting his right hand behind his back, the blonde did the, come. 
on, motion with his left hand, still sitting on the edge of the bed. Try to punch or kick me or whatever. I'll only use my left hand to block you. If you're able to land even a single hit, I'll agree that I'm just a ninja boast. It's an easy task isn't it? Naruto had a small smile on his face as he motioned for him to attack. The black-haired boy gritted his teeth a bit before he launched himself forward. Take this. And this. 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 The Jinchuriki had an amused smile on his face, his right hand cupping his cheek as he blocked all of Inari's sloppy punches and kicks with his left hand easily. Are you finished yet? A yawn escaped his lips as Inari stepped back, panting a bit as he gazed at the blonde with surprise written all over his face. Huh? You're tired already? I was hoping you could go on for another five minutes. Your little fists are good for an acupuncture treatment you know. I'm not tired. Inari shouted as he again leapt forward, his small fist approaching Naruto's face when it stopped just inches away from the blonde's nose. I. I can't move, he verbalized with wide eyes as Naruto just stared at him with a smirk. Ah, oh, I thought we were just boastful ninja? The boy's eyes narrowed in anger as he tried to muscle his way out of whatever was restraining him. Unable to even move his eyes, Inari had an urge to step away as suddenly the amused look on Naruto's face morphed into a dark serious one. This. The blonde started as he grabbed the fist in front of his nose tightly. This fist reeks of nothing but fear, keep them tight, steady. The Jinchuriki leaned forward, his face inches away from Inari's startled one. Look into my eyes, the blonde's tone was fiercely deep, his oceanic blue orbs piercing right through Inari's black orbs. The boy stared back into his sapphire pools. Do you recognize these eyes? Do you get a sense of familiarity? You daily look in the mirror don't you, into haunted eyes like these? Look into my eyes and tell me, take a wild guess kid, how much pain do you see? Naruto's voice was low now, yet holding a ferocious undertone to it as he held the boy's shoulders tightly. Do you see the pain in them, the pain reflecting repeatedly between our eyes? Inari was just speechless as he stared into the blonde's eyes. Do you see the anger? Naruto. Ryuk thought with an astonished look on his face. Do you see the will to fight back? Naruto shook Inari's shoulders firmly, pushing his forehead into Inari's. Do you see the darkness? Do you see the resolution, the ambition? Are these the eyes of a boastful ninja who's trying to be a hero just to get some fucking crap called fame? Don't you see the firepower, the will to live, the stubbornness? And mark my words I'm such a stubborn ass that I don't stop until I kick that rotten stinking ass I wanted to. I give no shit, I take no shit. Inari had a stunned countenance in his eyes, not knowing how to respond. You have suffered yes, that was clear to me the moment I looked into your eyes. But that's part of life. Scream to whatever heaven's up there that it's not fair, but no Kami or Shinigami is gonna come and make it fair for you. Hey! Ryuk exclaimed in response to the unintended. Or maybe intended pun. I don't want to hear your tragic past. Neither do I have the time to cry about my life to you. Whatever happened to you, whosoever precious to you died, remember that person, cherish that person, but get over the damn grief. If that person failed to be a hero, you become a hero. Teach him how to do it the badass way. You have a family, at least thank Kami for that. Your mom fusses over you so much. Do you how many orphans are out there in the world who are ready to die to get in your place? Do you? Much more times than you have pitifully cried yourself to sleep at nights I'm sure. The Shinigami hovering beside the blonde couldn't believe his eyes. Were the Jinchuriki's eyes actually glossy or was the reflected moonlight playing tricks on him? By now tears were again streaming down Inari's wide eyes as he gazed at the whiskered blonde. B. But. I. It H. Hurts so much, he choked as the blonde's grip on his shoulders loosened, his oceanic pools getting softened. That's why it is so difficult, that is why very few people can do it. But I did it, it still hurts, but as I said before. I'm one stubborn ass. I refuse to give in to these negative feelings, I refuse to be a crybaby, Naruto's voice was gentle now while Ryuk just listened in quietly. River of tears were gliding down Inari's moist cheeks as he bit his upper lip tightly, still not being able to move as he stared at the blonde with squinted eyes. I. It's so C. Confusing at T. Times. I don't know W. What to do. Inari almost wailed when Naruto rested a hand on the boy's head with a bitter smile on his face. 
I know kid, I can understand. But let me tell you something, something a very wise person told me when I was little. She called it, the cardiac jukebox, by the amused look in the Jinchuriki's eyes, Riot could tell the blonde found the name to be funny. Have you ever wondered Inari as to what is right, what is wrong? What is good, what is bad? What is correct, what is incorrect? What to do, what not to do? How to live your life? What to do in your life? The answer to all those questions are here. Inari looked down, surprisingly being able to move his head, to notice Naruto's hand over his heart. If you ever get confused, if you don't know what to do, just listen to your heart. Your heart is always telling you what to do, it's you who has to listen. Listen to it kid, listen to the music of your heartbeats. It's not easy, even if you listen to it, it's not easy to do what your heart says. Following the heart is probably one of the most difficult thing to do for a person. Why? It's because we are habitual to do everything in our lives using this, Naruto paused as he pointed to his head. We listen to our mind for the most part, and that's something which makes us more of a predictable droid following a specific logic, it takes our humanity away. I'm not asking to stop using your brain altogether, but to rather avoid not listening to your heart. Do you understand where I'm going with this? What does your heart say right now Inari? What does it say whenever you look at that picture frame? The Jinchuriki questioned as the boy looked at him, a bit perplexed when the blonde put the picture in front of his face. Here, look at it. And tell me what your heart says. What does it tell you to do? Inari stared at it for a few seconds before answering with a hint of anger in his voice. It tells me to kick Gato's ass. To complete what Kaiza started. Naruto smirked lightly as he put the picture back on the dresser. And now, what does your mind say? It's saying something familiar right? He asked while the black haired boy lowered his head, a timid sort of look on his face as he wiped his cheeks. B. But, I'm just a kid. What can I do? A little kid like me can do nothing to an evil like Gato, the whiskered blonde smiled actively this time as he put a hand on Inari's shoulders. See what I'm talking about. This was your mind talking right now. Pulling you back, getting you back into that familiar self-pity drive, the boy snapped his head back up with realization evident in his eyes. So, so. He started while Ryuk too stared at the boy, entranced by the conversation going on. Yeah? Naruto urged Inari to go with a smirk. But what the hell can I really do? Do you mean to say I should just stand up against Gato, a little kid like me? The most I can do is grab a pitchfork and hope it lands straight between that fat blob's butt cheeks. Ryuk burst out laughing at Inari's innocent cry of comic frustration. Naruto however had that patented, are you stupid? Look on his face as he flicked the boy on his forehead lightly. I did tell you not to stop using your brain didn't I kid? What I mean is that sometimes you have to use your heart to choose a path, to make a decision, but to walk along that path. Nobody made a rule that says, use of brain prohibited, Inari blushed in embarrassment as he averted his gaze. A warm look crossed the blonde's eyes when he spoke. What that person told me. It's the wisest thing I've ever heard. However, I couldn't follow it. I couldn't listen to my heart. I could never listen to my heart. Until now. A few days ago I made a decision after listening to my heart, even though my mind was screaming at me, screaming at me that what I was doing was utterly idiotic and rash with no logic whatsoever. But it was like, this time I found the courage to finally follow my heart. Since that moment, I haven't regretted my decision once. And no matter what happens from now on, I won't. It's a wonderful feeling of accomplishment for me, something you might not understand now, someday which I hope you will though. The trio turned their heads upon hearing Tsunami call Naruto from downstairs. Well, I gotta go. I've wasted enough of my time on a little squirt like you anyways, the blonde articulated with a small smile as he stood up. Inari just looked at him, not aware that he was able to move now as the Jinchuriki walked to the door. Fine then, I'll show you what I can do. I'll stand up to that freak in my own way. I'll do anything I can do, anything to fight back. Naruto stopped as he glanced at the determined look in Inari's eyes, a smirk stretching his lips. Hey, he's already doing it, the blonde thought as he exited the room while Riot kept staring at him, still not believing what had happened in the room. It was like he had seen a whole new face of Naruto there. He had never seen the blonde display so many emotions. It was, really astounding for the Shinigami, someone who had been staying with him constantly since he had met him. 
I want to erase as much hatred from this world as possible. It doesn't matter to me if the people see me as a god, a murderer, a monster or whatever. I'm just doing what my heart is telling me to do. Ryuk recalled the exact words Naruto had spoken to him the day they had first met. You idiot. Even without you knowing it, you've been following your heart all along. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.